Hi guys, my name is Angelo Rajadurai. I'm part of Oracle in the systems division. I'm an engineer who works in the ISV engineering organization. I've been with Oracle and Sun for the last 22 years, and I've seen this chip thing developing. What we're here to talk about today is not a tiny little change in the chip design. We're doing something completely different. We're doing something revolutionary. We're doing something very, very different that the industry is not even beginning to think about. We are not doing some evolutionary thing. It's a revolutionary stuff that we're doing. We're calling it software in silicon. What it is, is really pushing some software stuff into silicon. And because of that, what you're going to do is gain some huge performance gains, amazing performance gains. We are also going to do some great security gains. We are making this whole thing more secure because we're pushing software in silicon. And again, if you look at it, people are talking about big data. People are talking about data growing. What we're doing by moving software into silicon is we're going to talk about how we're going to use this to increase the amount of capacity the systems can do today. You know what we're going to do? This is not stuff that is just slideware. We have a chip looking just like that, which does all of this today. And we're going to demo it to you, to prove it to you that it's possible. And in fact, if you want to try it, we're going to give you a way to try it today. You can come in and try it for yourself. What you're going to do in this set of videos is going to talk about all of these features and end it up with a beautiful demo that shows you what exactly this thing can do. Guys, we talked about performance in the last video, and we talked about capacity, right? So I want to tell you this, right? If you get better performance, you're going to get a bonus, right? If you increase capacity in your systems, you're going to get a bonus. But if you screw up on security, you're going to lose your job, right? You want to make sure that you got the security thing done right, right? So basically, in this video, we're going to talk about how we're using the M7 chip, or our latest chip we've been talking about, how we're using that by using software and silicon to give you better security, right? So we're going to do security, OK? And I want to introduce another concept here. It's called ADI, and it stands for Application Data Integrity, right? So we are using this software and silicon feature to enhance security on the M7 chip, okay? This is basically how we are doing it in this video, okay? So now let's look at any microprocessor. In the microprocessor, we have what we call as pointers, right? And these pointers are basically pointing to different locations in memory, okay? So this is your memory. Typically, people had 32 bits for pointers, okay? So you would have 32 bits that allows you to point for all the Mac geeks here, which means 2 power 32, which is about 4 gigabytes of memory is what you could actually do, right? What people said was, that's not enough. We need more. And as hardware engineers, we'd like to do everything in multiples, right? So instead of doing 33, we basically said we'll do 64 bits for pointers, OK? The idea is very simple. Now we have 64 bits for pointers, which means now I can have a memory that is 2 power 64 bits wide. Way too much. None of the systems today, probably none of the systems till I die, is going to have a system in 64. Famous last words, but it's not available today, right? So what we typically need is we need about 40 bits to do address, and that's still pretty high. That's still about 1,024 terabytes of RAM, right? That's still pretty high which means you have basically 24 bits of address space sitting around doing nothing. Out of the 64 bits, 40 used for real memory, the rest basically sitting around doing nothing. We at Oracle said, that's not a good thing. Can I use this for something else? Of course I can. We're going to use this to make sure the pointer is pointing to the right amount of memory. Okay? Let me take you, give you another small set of uh, primer here. right? So basically what happens is, when you allocate memory for some purpose, whatever purpose, you want to allocate a chunk of memory, you get a pointer here, which is the address of this memory, OK? So this pointer is can point to, let's say, 128 bytes of data. So typically, people would be very careful to allocate enough memory and use this pointer to basically only access this amount of memory. And that has to be done fully by humans without any computer help, right? The system is not helping you. You need to make sure your programmer is fed with nice coffee. Make sure that they are not writing code that is actually using more than 20, 128 bytes if they have a pointer that only has access to 128 bytes, okay? This is common stuff. Now, let's say you access this byte. 
and you write it into this byte. You write using this pointer into this byte. This is somebody else's memory. So this could be a variable A. Let's say this is variable B. Now we are using variable A to write into variable B's memory. This causes memory corruption. Is this problem real? Of course it's real. In fact, any application today, almost every application today in the world, basically is doing some mistakes like this. And the only reason that they're existing without crashing is because they got lucky. And they don't get lucky very often. And in production, most likely they get unlucky, which means you could be crashing the system, could be losing your job, because some crazy programmer forgot to make sure that his pointer and his memory is the same, right? This is a common problem. People spend yodas of money, huge amount of money, to get software to make sure this is working right, okay? We said we're gonna take a new approach, very simple approach. You're using some of this 24 bits to keep a version number, okay? Let's call the version number eight. So for this pointer, this memory location also would have the version number eight in here, okay? And in hardware, from this chip, from my M7 chip, when you're using a pointer to allocate, to read or write memory, I'm gonna take the version number in the, uh, in the pointer and check with the version number in the memory and make sure these version, version matches. If it matches, everything is great. But the moment you write to this, you're gonna look at this version number. Oh, this is nine, and this is eight. Oh, these two don't match. So my hardware is gonna say, no, you can't read it or write it. So even if your application developer had made a mistake and wrote code that is doing this extra, this bad thing, we're gonna stop you from doing it because the chip is now, has software and silicon capability in it to stop you from doing these bad things, okay? This is a concept of ADI. This by itself is very, very, very useful because you might be avoiding data corruption that's happening within your program and you can do it at chip speed, which means we can do it with very, very little overhead compared to what you do it in software speed, which has got overhead of like 200 times, right? That is a huge amount of overhead to pay. So this allows you to basically do this level of data integrity completely on chip, okay? That's great. But can I use this for any other purpose? <coughs> so I can. I'm gonna give you an idea for how I can take this same concept of data integrity to use it for applying the security problem that people are having, right? Let me take a small example to explain how this is done. We have heard about the heart bleed virus, and this has been a virus that has affected about 80% of all the world's websites, okay? And it was because of a simple problem that was introduced by a developer who forgot to do a small little check. Let me explain this. When you go to your bank's website, your browser basically does a thing called a heartbeat request to your bank, right? So here's your bank, and here is your browser, right? And your browser is gonna say, hey, Mr. Bank, do you do HTTPS or SSL? And here in the back, there is OpenSSL, which is what used by a lot of people, OpenSSL, was used by a lot of people, and in this, they had something called a heart beat. How does this work? Your browser would set a word called hello, right? And hello is one, two, three, four, five characters. It will say, I'm sending you five characters, and I want you to record back those characters. So it will say hello, five characters. The heartbeat uh, part of OpenSSL basically writes hello into its memory, hello, and it sends you five characters because it told you it's five characters, and it sends it back. Your browser knows the, your bank can do HTTPS, and now it starts talking HTTPS with OpenSSL, right? Common thing. But not everybody in the world are like you. There are a few people that are hackers, not very good. And these people actually found out that if I take phi out and if I put 64K, OpenSSL wasn't checking. All it was doing here was putting the word hello, and then from beginning this pointer, it was using the same pointer to read all the way down to 64 kilobytes of data which means all the data that is there in OpenSSL was being read and sent back to the system. And this could have passwords, it could have certificates, it could have all sorts of things here. All the hacker had to do was sit there and keep saying, hello, 64K, hello, 64K, and it would return back huge amounts of data that was being used by the hacker. Now let's apply ADI to this problem, right? I have my chip and I'm running OpenSSL on my chip, right? I'm running the same buggy code, right? I'm not touching your code. The code is the same. The developer is not having extra coffee. He's written the same bad code. Now at this point, he's actually going and doing this. 
He's doing a heartbeat. He put hello in here. And then the moment he starts writing here, we're going to look at the version number, right? Up till here, it's going to be great. Eight, version number eight. Here, it's version number nine. It goes, no, I don't have access to that. This particular pointer doesn't have access to this particular location. It's going to stop you from doing it. And the hacker can send how many ever times he wants. You might have bad code. But because M7 is smart enough, and we have software and silicon in M7, it's going to stop you from actually sending data that you don't belong to you, to the hacker. Right? So we're not going to be sending passwords. We're not going to be sending certificates because we decided to put software and silicon into the M7 chip. Right? Again, I want to emphasize this over and again. Right? This is not slideware. We have a chip today that can do this. It's the M7 chip. We've put it in the cloud, and we have access to the cloud. You have access to the cloud. You can come in and sign up and actually try this feature in the cloud today. What we're going to do next is show you a video how to use the M7 chip to stop the Heartbleed virus. We're going to demo it to you, right? Just so that you know this thing is real. We have that demo coming up next, so please stay on and watch the next video. Guys, we saw how we have put some software into silicon to enhance security for our application, how to stop heart bleed and so on. Today, this is available in our cloud. What we want you to do is to go to the swissdev.oracle.com cloud, register to have access to it. You will get access to an M7 machine. You can bring in your app. You can test it on an M7 and make sure that you don't have any security vulnerability. It will tell you. We can do it for you. It's simple. And even if for you to check whether you're doing any memory leak kind of problems, We'll allow you to do that on the cloud. Do come, sign up, and see for yourself what we're saying here is not just slideware, but it's real and it's available today.